Hi guys, today we will be doing The Life of Pi Lesson 3. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel down below and also give us a comment as to where you are from. For today's lesson, we will be looking at what is a theme as well as the different themes that are in the novel. The first thing we need to think of is what is a theme? A theme can be defined as the central issues in a text. Themes usually relate to issues that are universal or applicable to contexts beyond the text itself. When it comes to the theme, this is what allows us years later to still study the same texts. For instance, if we look at Shakespeare, we have been studying his work for over 400 years, and that is because his themes are still applicable to us today. When you are dealing with the themes of a novel, it is important to note the theme as well as examples that relate to that theme. When you get to a literature essay, you will most likely meet up with a theme and then need to explain it in relation to the novel itself. Life of Pi, while appearing to be an adventure story or castaway story, raises several important issues or themes. The main theme is that of the better story and how the better story can inspire us and help us understand the world. Life of Pi, according to Jan Mattel, can be summarized in three statements. Life is a story, you can choose your story, and a story with God is the better story. A recurring theme throughout the novel is that of the life of a story. This raises the questions, what is truth and what is fiction? Are there different kinds of truth? Pi, at the end of the novel, asks the two investigators, if you stumble at mere believability, what are you living for? This raises the question as to whether religion and a religious view of the world makes life a better story. We are asked to judge which is the better of the two stories Pi tells to the investigators. The hard to believe, mysterious, inspirational story offering hope or the flat, more believable story. Mattel is suggesting how religion or fiction in the form of an inspirational and barely credible story such as Pi's often tells a richer story than a factual, verifiable account does. There is no such thing as a single true story but the richer story, although it may not line up with the factual events, says something about our humanness in a way that straight facts never could. Throughout his ordeal, Pai calls on stories from all three of his religions to give meaning to his suffering and to provide him with hope. The next theme is the relationship between reason or science and religion. Throughout the novel, science and religion, two seemingly opposite areas of study and worldviews, intermingle and complement each other. In part one, the two Mr. Kumars although the two are indistinguishable in name, represent these two apparently opposing views, and they come together and both marvel at the zebra in the zoo. Pi comes to realize that their views are complementary views or faiths. Pi's knowledge of science and his religious faith combine to affect his survival in part two, remembering his biology teacher's advice to pay close attention to every detail he uses empirical observation of Richard Parker and of marine life to help him to survive. The adult Pi ends up with a degree in both zoology and religious studies and does not make a sharp distinction between the two. Pi's ability to see religious meaning in his desperate experiences and the love he develops for Richard Parker also sustain and provide him with hope through his ordeal. The theme of the reconciliation of science and religion as equally valid ways to understand the world is also related to the mathematical concept of Pi, using the irrational to explain the rational. Another theme that the novel explores 
is that all religions are essentially the same. During his childhood and early adolescence, Pai starts to discover the central belief of all three religions he explores and practices. That is love. His faith is severely tested during his ordeal, but in the end, his survival against tremendous odds and the gratitude and love he develops for Richard Parker serves to strengthen his religious faith and his desire to practice all three of the religions. This is evident from the author's description of the adult pie's house in chapter 15. This novel also explores the theme that true religion does not depend on dogma or public display. Pai's way of finding God, a universal God, is not confined by dogma or the need for the correct public display. Mr. Kumar number two is a humble man. His prayer rituals are not showy or self-conscious. Pai practices his religious rituals in the confines of the boat throughout his journey. He is interested in faith rather than organized religion. Martel's story has been described as one of personal growth through adversity and as a coming of age story. His ordeal adrift in the ocean tests his physical and emotional strength, his intelligence and his religious faith to the limits. Pai is 16 years of age at the time of his ordeal. He learns that tigers are dangerous at a young age, when his father forces him to watch a tiger devour a live goat. He also knows about the theory of lion taming. Later, after he is reduced to despair and to trying to stay alive on the lifeboat with the company of a fully grown tiger, Pai draws on his knowledge of animal behavior and lion taming strategies to tame Richard Parker. In the process, he develops alpha qualities as he musters the strength, confidence and the will to survive. He also uses his ingenuity and previous scientific knowledge to develop the practical skills he needs to survive. In this process, he develops and grows stronger emotionally. He overcomes fear and despair and develops spiritually, finding a deep love for the tiger, for the beauty of nature and as well as strengthening of his religious faith. Our glimpses of the adult pie in Canada through the eyes of the author confirm that this is the case. Pai realizes how alike in many ways animals and humans are. We are all animals with good and bad qualities and we are all interdependent. Pai's knowledge of animal behavior in a zoo makes him realize that on the lifeboat he is part of a zoo and has to deal with it using his knowledge. Although he knows about anthropomorphism or treating animals as if they were human and is able to view animals in a detached scientific way, he finds himself anthropomorphizing both Orange Juice and Richard Parker. Pye admits in Chapter 8, I quite frequently dressed wild animals in the tame costumes of imagination. During his ordeal, Pai experiences the ruthlessness of the elements, being battered by storms, burned by the sun, and threatened by both the tiger and various sea creatures. However, there are lyrical passages throughout part two, which celebrate the beauty of nature and of animals and arouse wonder in Pai. The description of the tiger in chapter 53 as a godlike creature of incredible beauty and power. Descriptions of the weather, the lightning storm in chapter 85, which aroused feelings of ecstasy in Pai. Descriptions of the ocean from both above and below in chapter 59.